Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Zootopica, the podcast where everything zoology from your day-to-day life to modern scientific research to the popular culture, everything meets. I'm Ruchira Somavira, I am a zoologist and I'll be your host. Today's episode is about questions kids have about the animal world. And to co-host this episode with me, I have Mr. Rehan. Ta-da! Okay. So, Rehan, so I've known you for how many years now? Uh, nine, because you're my dad. Yeah. yeah. Good times, bad times? Yeah. Yeah, that's behave, depending on how you behave. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, do you want to tell how we do this? So, oh, the kids questions all around the world yeah. and we have to answer them so they have sent the questions yeah we have selected some we got over 50 questions so we had to pick few um questions based on based on the time and also there were quite a lot of similar questions so we picked one if your question is not answered that's because something very similar is in the list so we have tried to get as many different questions as possible so shall we start yeah okay. and so you want to be a zoologist one day is it yeah and also a paleontologist and an astronaut right maybe you can study extinct aliens in other planets one day good idea there you go okay with that start so the first question so is you have to from... tell me where the person is from and uh, sorry who the person and where the person is from and then the uh, question this is from Liam in Washington, D.C. Where is Washington, D.C.? It's in the capital of America. Yep. Okay. So, what is the largest bird that can fly? So, a lot of us know that the largest bird is... The ostrich. The ostrich. But ostriches can't fly. So, are the next few in line, the emus, the rias, the cassowaries. Now, among the largest bird that can fly... Now... There's few ways of defining what the largest bird is. So one way is with wingspan. wingspan. Yeah, so when you spread your leg, uh, when the bird spread the wings, how long it is from one tip to the other tip. Based on that, you have your albatross. Um, albatross are wandering birds. Albatross. The wandering albatross is the biggest, but there's few others. There are big pelican species like the great white pelican. So these guys, they, they have amazingly big wingspan. Uh, some are over like three and a half meters long. So that's pretty long, right? Yeah. Three and a half meters is pretty long. So some people go by that and say the wandering albatross and some of the pelicans are the biggest birds in the world. Some people go by their weight. So some are quite heavy, like the Andes condos. right? They can uh, some of these some of these birds are raptors. What are raptors? They're predators. Yeah, they're birds of prey. Yeah. So they so they should be able to carry big prey, right? So the Andean condors can do that. And so are um, uh, you, in, in Africa, you have the Kori bustards. I've seen them in um, in Kruger. They're actually big and, and looks pretty chunky, heavy. So, so some people go by the weight. Then there are others who go by the height, right? Like some of your stalks. What are, what's a big stalk that you know? Who's the guy? Who's the black and white one you get in Australia? Wait, what is it? Jabiru. Oh. Yeah, Jabiru. Yeah, Brolgas, um, your flamingos. They're quite tall birds, but they can fly, right? Yeah. So there's many ways of telling what's the biggest bird that can fly. So there's not only one answer. If you go by the wingspan, there's one set. If you go by the, the heaviness, the weight, there's another set. If you go by height, there's another set. How's that? Good. Yeah, so the thing is that in a lot of, in the animal world or in the living world, there are, it's very hard to list things like what's the biggest, what's the this, what's this, mm-hmm. because, I mean, kids love to know lists, right? What's the fastest, what all that, but they're hard because it's not like in a machine or a building. There are so many exceptions and how you measure. Next. The next one is from Tessa in the UK. I have a pet snake at home and sometimes he sheds his skin in parts, but sometimes as a whole. Why is that? 
Okay, so so all all reptiles, all lizard, li the reptiles including snakes, lizards, everything. Yeah. Your amphibians, fish, they all shed their skin. Like fish do it, but we don't see it because because it's underwater. Yeah, exactly. They live in water, so it just, it just gets dissolved. Dissolved. Right? So so snakes are like a tube, as you know. Normally, the whole skin comes off, starting from the lips and the face. It's like turning a sock inside out, right? It just comes off from the head and goes all the way down. Now, why they do this is to get rid of their parasites and when they grow, they need to like expand. Um, so that's why snakes shed. But sometimes it doesn't come as a complete tube. It comes in parts and some parts don't shed, especially the face, the eye. And that can be due to many reasons. One is uh, if they have a scar, if they have parasites, if they have like ticks, right on them sometimes it doesn't come off from there and if they have a scar that holding the skin like to the muscles that doesn't come sometimes if it is too dry the humidity level in where they are kept if that's a bit off it doesn't come if they are sick if they have some like deficiencies it doesn't come so there can be many many reasons so um, is it test yes, sir. test yeah. you should take your pet snake to a vet and get it checked because um you can do certain things at home if you dip it gently in a warm water bath, it might come off. But rather than doing that, I advise if you don't know much about looking after the snake, best thing is to um, get some help and get it checked. What's next? The next one is from Josh Lang in Sydney. Mm -hmm. What animal has the most toxic venom of all animals in the world? Oh, another list question. So. Okay, before that, do you want to tell what's the difference between venom and poison? So, venom, if it gives it to you, then you have venom. But if poison, if you eat it. Okay, good. So, in other words, like, say, if this is an animal, this is our um, mascot, by the way, it's, you know who this is. It's a Komodo. So, if, 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 an animal bites you or sting you or whatever um, and you get toxins inside you and you get sick or you die, that thing is a venomous thing, right? If you eat him or the animal and you get poison, then that's a poisonous animal. So like the puffer fishes, um, they're mostly poison, whereas most snakes are venomous because the snake has to bite you, but it's asking the most venomous one isn't it yes so the most venomous one as you might guess is not a snake or it's not a spider. spider it's a cone snail yeah it's actually a snail so okay before we go there again there are so many ways of measuring toxicity or how venomous the thing is so there's not only one list but in general we believe some of the cone shells these are snails that lives in the ocean. They're actually quite a big group. They're quite common. You might have seen them and not know. Some of the cone snails, like uh, species like the geograph cone, Conus geographus is the scientific name. Those guys have some extremely toxic venom um, to the level that a bite victim, a human can die within a few minutes. Like no snake can do that. Um, there's only very few records of death about uh, 30 to 35 but still um, we believe the cone shells have some of the most toxic venoms in within the entire animal world so these guys have a harpoon right when a fish goes by it just they the harpoon and yeah. get back in really fast yeah and that's how they actually inject the venom also amika from abai singha in sri lanka amika or oh, amika or oh, amika abai singha yeah is it true that a snake uses only one lung to breathe? Right. No, no, no. It's, it can be true. It can be true. So, you know why? Because uh, now snakes are literally a tube. Yeah. Right? So, you need to fit in all its organs in that body shape. Okay? So, what? So we have two lungs here in our chest. If a snake have two lungs like what we have, when it breathes, it will be like a bulge coming right so that 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 that's not you can't function like that so 
what they have is this very elongated lung. Now, in snakes, the right lung is always present and it's long. The left lung, on the other hand, can be three different forms. So pythons have two lungs. Their left lung is still there, but it's shorter. Then there are many, 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 many snakes would have a, a small left lung and a pretty long right one. Few snakes, like your sea snakes, some sea snakes, do not have the left lung. It's almost gone, right? It only have the, the right lung, which is quite long. So it is true that some snakes only have one lung, which is the right one, and breathe. But, but then in the snake world, as I said, in the animal world, there's no black and white. There's always this gradient of things. So it's another example. So what's next? Johan. What animal is Where's Johan from? Oh, uh, it doesn't say, so I'll just say he's from Earth. Okay. What animals use echolocation to move? Right. Do you know what echolocation is? Yeah. What? It's traveling by sound. Well done. So, okay. So, what happens if you scream inside a, inside a tunnel? <laughs> yeah? What happens? Then it will echo. You can, you can hear the echo, right? So, that's because your sound bounces back and you hear it again. Now, some animals have this amazing ability to send a sound wave and when it bounces back and come to you, you can detect it, right? How cool is that? So instead of watching, uh, at, like watching where you're going, you can like send a sound wave, like not like that, but some sound wave, it bounces back, it comes and it's like, oh, it came earlier here. So it must be some, there must be a rock, there must be a tree. Right? Normally, animals that use echolocation are animals that live in very dark places because that's what you need. And blind animals. Um, well, not really blind. They have no eyes because they live in dark caves. But I can't think of any animal without eyes that use echolocation. Okay, the animals that use echolocation are your bats. A lot of bats use that. Some dolphins and some whales, like especially species that live in murky water, so they don't actually see very well. They can use echolocation to find out, oh, there's, there's a school of fish there. Um, few birds use them, like the oil birds, but they use they live in caves. So again, a dark place, right? Like and, bats. Yeah, like bats. But then there are also some shrews and some... Um, uh, there's a very cool animal called the tenek. I really... Tenrek. I really want to see them there in Madagascar. Oh, Pretty cool. cool. You can see a photo. I will put a photo. Um, these guys also use it and they, they live pretty much like in like dark un, yeah exactly dark. so so it's mostly the bats the dolphins and um, whales that lives in murky waters very few birds and very few mammals that use echolocation so generally they all live in either places where they can't see very well or they're active at night time yeah cool. next is is it possible that life on Earth came from out of space? When you become an astro... No, not astrophysicist. You will be an astrobiologist. That's something yeah. you can find out. Um, who's that question from? Oh, yeah. It's from Nadia. Nadia? From, from Melbourne. From Melbourne. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, okay. Basically... Scientists still don't exactly know how life started, right? We have top people trying to find that out, but there are there are very educated guesses based on what we can see. So one, the main hypothesis or the the, the concept out there is that life started on Earth. There was a primordial soup, there were biomolecules, and they gave rise to simple life forms, and they evolved into uh, more complex life forms. That's very Yeah, like started in the ocean, like or like in water. But then there are other people who think that maybe not life, aliens didn't come, but like the those biomolecules that made life in the first place, right? They came from an asteroid or somewhere from out of space. Which is still, you know what? Maybe it is the case. We don't know. But the the main idea. So it's never that the like a life form came to Earth. It's like the molecules that made life might or could have come from out of space. That is another idea out there. But 
the main idea among scientists is that life evolved here on Earth. Huh. The next one is from Nate Patel uh, in India. Mm -hmm. What is an apex predator? What's so special of them? Oh, do you know what an apex predator? Yeah, oh, it's a it? predator on the top of the food chain. Good. So, yeah, so predators can come in so many different levels, right? A predator is something that eats another animal. So if you take... Uh, Shark. Yeah, so sharks, for in the ocean, some of the large sharks are certainly apex, apex predators. predators. Um, if you take the African African savannas, who's the apex predators? Lions. Yeah, lions. So see, there are many other predators, right? You you have your mongoose, which are your like bottom predators, and then you have like foxes and hyenas in the middle, and then you have lions on top. So uh, apex predator in that sense is something on top of a food chain who controls groups underneath it to a large extent. And there's another condition, um, an animal that normally do not get predated or eaten as an adult. So as adults, apex predators don't have many things that can kill them. So like, uh, for example, I don't know, there's not many things well, that kill a lion. Quite different, you know. Um, right. So there's not many things that kill an adult lion, right? Um, yeah, crocodiles can take them. So well, it depends. Keepers kind of kill them, but they don't eat them. Eat them, yeah, exactly. So, so that's an apex predator, something on top of a food chain who controls everything underneath it. Why special? In some systems, we already have the science to show that when an apex predator is missing, the whole system can face trouble. If no one's controlling, it's like say if 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 your if your school doesn't have a principal or a teachers. What everyone, will happen to the kids? Everyone will run free. You guys will do everything that you like, anything you want, right? There's no order, right? So it's like that. So it's when they're gone, the system sometimes collapse. Sometimes they just settle at different levels. Right. So for example, when um, when the wolves were hunted to extinction in parts of US, the wolves co were controlling all the deer. There was nothing to control the deer. So the deer, there were too many, too many deer. They ate pretty much all the plants and completely changed the environment. And then there comes a time where there's nothing to eat and then animals that eat plants crash too. So that's why predators are needed. And unfortunately, around the world, large predators like the apex predators are being hunted, right? Or are under threat. Definitely sharks. Definitely sharks. Some, most sharks. People eat their fins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had an episode about it. What's next? Is it... This is from Amelia. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't say it, so I'll just say it's from Earth again. Yeah. Is it safe swimming with orcas? Ooh, orcas. What's another name for orcas? Killer whales. Yeah, so they're called killer whales because they can? Kill. Yeah, they're actually apex predators. Just going back to the other question. So Amelia, look, I would love to do it. I'm, if I get a chance, I would love to do it. Um, there are places you can actually do that. Snorkel? Yeah, like um, um, I'm pretty sure somewhere in uh, places in North Europe, especially like in around Norway, you can, there are places that actually commercially you can go and dive with uh, or snorkel with orcas. I won't do that with, unless it's a very specialized, very well run tourism operation like that. They do hunt sharks, they do hunt sea lions, mm. like seals, everything. They're big predators, so there's certainly a risk, but people have done that and there are places you can do it. Um, whether you'll just go at, and jump in water if you see an orca, absolutely not. They're not really trained, so what they believe is that some orca populations eat only like small fish, so they don't hunt for large prey, right? So it's those populations that they have used. Yeah, we yeah. should do that one day. Yeah. Yeah, cool. That would be cool. This one is from Oliver from Earth again. Do you think Tasmanian tigers are still living hidden in the forests in Australia? So Oliver should be from Australia, most likely. No yeah. one would know about Tasmanian tiger. Oh, well, a few people might know. Um, so... Thylacines. Yeah, they're also called thylacines. You learned about them, eh? Yeah. So, um, so Oliver... 
thylacines as far as we know were once found around australia like in the mainland but they went extinct and they were only found in tasmania at the end that's why they're called tasmanian tigers and the last one we know died in the Hobart Zoo. Hobart is in, um, in the, that's the Tasmanian Hobart. Zoo. Uh, yeah, Hobart. The capital of Tasmania. Tasmania. Yeah. So the last one died in 1930s. So it's been how many years? Uh, about 80 years yeah. since the last one we know died. Since then, there hasn't been any confirmed records. No one has actually caught one. No one has taken any samples from one. But there are hundreds and hundreds of records of thylacines, people claiming they have seen thylacines crossing the road at night or in their backyard, even around Perth. Right? There are a lot of records around Perth. So there are scientists actually looking for them. There's a project as far as I know in, in Queensland, which, which is actually a, a proper science project, a scientific research happening to, to see whether they are around. So there are many ways we can detect animals, um, remote cameras. You can set up remotely triggered cameras. If something moves, it will trigger. You can use technologies like eDNA, that's environmental DNA. You can take swabs from the, from the surrounding and check whether there's any signs, any DNA signs of these animals. So that research is happening, but we don't have any solid evidence to show that Tasmanian tigers are still living. It's a possibility because um, you, you never know. Australia is a very, re for large part, is very remote. People have, don't study them. Uh, people don't travel in most interior parts, so who knows? Um, and sometimes uh, things that we thought extinct have popped up, like um, what's the, uh, the fish, um, the deep sea fish? Yeah. What is it? Anglerfish? No, um, the what, low ground, coelacanth, right? Oh, the coelacanth. Yeah, so they people thought they went extinct like millions of years ago, well before the thylacines, but all of a sudden, um, about 70 years ago, start popping up, right? Now there's two species. So like that, you never know. Uh, there's a part of zoology called cryptozoology, which is the study of hidden animals or mysterious animals. And um, thylacines have been part of that now. And people are studying them. The next one is from Emma in Perth. What is the slowest animal in the world? <laughs> is that the way you say Yeah. the slowest? Um, but now that list one, kids love lists, don't they? Like yeah. you also love, like what's what's the fastest? What's the what's the biggest superhero? Why is Thanos powerful than everyone else? <laughs> um, is Michael Jordan the best? Yeah, he probably was at that time. Um, so the uh, what's what's it? The slowest animal. Slow. So Emma, it's that's a question that's actually very hard to answer. As in, there's no answer for that simply because some, some animals don't move. Yeah, don't move at all. Right. So like your corals. Most sea animals, like invertebrates that lives in the ocean, they once they settle down as a larvae and start growing, they don't move at all. Like they, they move around, but they don't actually walk or change their, where they live. So, I mean, you, I'm sure if you Google, it will come up as, um, what, the sloth, some sloth snail. Snails. Yeah, all those. T tortoises. Maybe some tortoises, yeah. Maybe, yeah. What are the other slow things you can think of? Um, yeah, those are very commonly believed. I mean, when you talk to kids, those are the normal ones that come up. But there's no science showing this is the slowest because there's no way of measuring it because some animals don't ever move. And some animals don't move for months and months, that, those that hibernate, right? And then some animals only move at certain life stages and then they settle down. So because of all those, it's... Almost impossible to see who's the slowest. Why have specialist eaters like koalas and pandas have not evolved to eat other things which make it easy for them to survive? Good. Okay, so the question is that, look, some things we know that pandas eat what? Bamboo. Koalas? Uh, eucalyptus. Leaves. Yeah, the gum trees, right? Gum, gum leaves. Certain ones, certain species. So we only know that we know that animals like koalas and pandas, they are very picky eaters, right? Like some of the kids, like, I can't eat broccoli. Yeah. So, but why? Whereas, so if, if you are only eating very few things, life's going to be hard if those things are gone, right? So in the animal world, most animals are generalists. 
meaning that they'll eat a lot of things. And then there are a few specialists okay. which eat uh, only like a group of things. And then there are ultra specialists like your pandas and some. Eat only one. Yeah, like as in one very specific group of things, right? Mm -hmm. um, why they have not evolved? Uh, I actually honestly don't know, but it could be that when they evolved, those things were very common. So they didn't have a need to go and eat other things. There were plenty of gum trees and plenty of bamboo, bamboo. to eat. But now with the habitats changing and then um, and uh, deforestation and animals are also being hunted, they are getting they are restricted to these places with limited food. Koalas not so much, but pandas certainly is. Um, why they have not evolved? Evolution can take some time, right? So most times it has happened over thousands or even millions of years ago, millions of years. Some evolutions happen at a very short period, but things like this, if your whole life you have been eating one thing and all of a sudden one panda can't, you know what? I'm going to eat, I don't know, carrots, right? So it doesn't happen like that. Carrots? Yeah. What's this? Hmm. Yeah, you never know, but like it hasn't happened. So even keeping those animals in captivity is a big problem because they are very picky. So evolution might happen over time, but obviously it's a very slow process when it comes to ultra specialists like this. Uh, fun fact, bamboo is the fastest growing thing. It grows the fastest. Growing thing in the world? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so like every day it grows, I don't know how many centimeters. Uh, and so is a uh, giant kelp. You remember the kelp forest when we snorkel? Yeah. So those are also amazingly fast growers. No animal grows that fast. Uh, the next one is from Ava in Perth. Are there any animals that never sleep? Um, that never sleep? Probably not. But sleep as we know and as we do is quite different to what animals do right we sleep when do we start sleeping normally like around midnight around midnight oh you don't go till midnight I what mean, time, uh, uh, what time do you... yeah so when the sun goes down when it comes dark humans normally sleep right and they wake up with the sun sun coming up so we are sensitive to light and that's how we our sleep cycles operate animals don't do that Animals are quite different. They don't, they don't have this, okay, at night time I'm going to sleep, at daytime I'm going to be active, kind of a routine. They go in and out of sleep. Like if you see like your dogs, for example, if you look at your dogs, they'll, they'll sleep and wake up, active, sleep. And most animals are like that. And sleep as we know is also different. So like when we go to sleep, we are like, we are done, no, right? No. Animals don't do that. Animals can still move and shut off parts of their body and rest. Mm -hmm. Like sharks. Some sharks need to continuously swim, otherwise they'll... Or else, they'll, because they're too heavy, they'll sink to the Yeah, body. they don't have what's called a swim bladder, so they'll, they'll actually, they'll drown. So, uh, so those kind, that's a, it's a type of sleep, but not as we know it. So there are a lot of animals that do that. They, they're still shutting off parts of their body, but still being active. So I don't think there's a single animal that just never sleep, but sleep is different in the animal world compared to what we do as humans. So they go in and out of sleep, sleep um, uh, modes, like insects, uh, insects, like they never go to like, you know what? You have, you, ever, you have never seen a spider like fully spread out Right? Sleeping, isn't it? Like you'll never see one with all eight legs spread out and like, oh, relax, right? But well, they do have ways of uh, relaxing and then uh, recovering. If they do relax on the web, it's an easy target for prey. Could be, yeah. Like birds. Yeah, yeah. So they're always vigilant. They're always like looking after, but there are ways of shutting down. Maybe we'll do one more question and we'll break it for this episode because it's quite long and we'll continue the other ones in the next episode. The lucky last is... Who was that? Ilija from Bali. Mm -hmm. Which country is Bali in? Bali is in Malaysia. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Indonesia. Indonesia. 
What is the largest dinosaur that roamed Earth? Ooh. Um, Paleontologist. Yeah. Do you know the answer? Most people think it's the Apatosaurus. Wait, not the Apatosaurus. The Argentinosaurus, but uh, there could be more bigger fossils. So basically, so when you when you find a dinosaur, you don't find the whole dinosaur, skeleton. right? You don't find the whole skeleton. So you, you, so most of these estimates of how big or long a dinosaur comes from estimates. They are not measurements. Sometimes so, there are full skeletons. Very few, not very few, and mostly for smaller species, right? For lo most of the big ones, you get parts of the skeleton, and then they recreate the other bits. Right, so most dinosaurs are only known from um, like a leg bone or a few few bones, and then based on that they recreate what the animal looks like. Um, naming what is the biggest one is pretty hard, as you said, Apatosaurus, Argentinosaurus. Those are all um, all candidates for the biggest dinosaur. Yeah. yeah, but one thing which is which is certain is that the biggest and biggest dinosaur, all the biggest dinosaurs or the longest dinosaurs belong to one group called sauropods. Sauropods. Yeah, so sauropods are these classical dinosaurs like your Brachiosaurus, right? Mm -hmm. Four short legs, long tail and long thin neck with a small head. And what do they eat? They eat leaves from trees. Yeah, plant eaters. Branches. Yeah, so, so sauropods, we know that sauropods are the biggest dinosaurs, which sauropod it depends it depends on that there's always new discoveries there was a new discovery i can't remember the name of the um, dinosaur but uh which they claim could be the largest um but Stephanie. quite a few species of sauropods are competing for the biggest dinosaur but you know what none of the sauropods that we have found yet are bigger than the blue whale the blue still whale. living today yeah yeah so the the biggest thing that ever lived on Earth is still living on Earth, which is the blue whale. So no dinosaur has ever been measured to be bigger than the living um, blue, whale. blue whale. Okay, with that, Bob, I think we need to uh, wrap up because that's... Um, okay, we have questions for another episode. So we'll meet you in another episode about... What's our topic? about kids questions kids questions about the animal world till then thank you very much see ya bye